My name is Sarah Kaltwasser, and I'm the Artist in Residence and Art Program Supervisor at Keswick Wise and Wells Center for Healthy Living in Baltimore, Maryland. Today, I'm going to show you how to do an art project in my home studio. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a 3D drawing using Elmer's glue, soft pastel, and black paper. The supplies you're going to need include you're going to need a pencil. I'm using a pink colored pencil for this process today. You're going to need a container of Elmer's glue. It can be clear or white glue. Either is fine. You're going to need some black paper. Uh, I suggest something a little bit thicker, like a cardstock paper. You're going to need a box of soft pastels. You can use the stick soft pastels. We don't have a lot of colors here, but what we have is enough for what we need today and you want it to be really chalky. Now if you don't have stick pastels you can use something called pan pastels. These kind of look like little makeup containers but it's pastel instead of regular foundation or eyeshadow and it comes in all different colors and you can use different types of applicators with these including sponges or brushes. We're going to be using a brush today. I suggest a stiff bristle brush to really pick up that pastel. If you don't have a brush, you can also use a napkin. That works just fine as well. So we're going to start with just drawing out the basic idea for our, our 3D drawing. I'm going to begin by uh, drafting a simple landscape. I put in my ground plane and now I'm adding in the mountains. And I'm keeping the shapes very simple, uh, simple lines, nothing too um, abrupt in terms of where marks are going and I've added like little snow cap ridges there and I'm putting in the sun and some of the final detail to create some visual interest is going to be these like rays of light that are extending out on the composition. There we go. And I think I'll add in a path just for good measure. Okay. Now you're going to take your glue and you're going to make sure the cap is opened all the way so you have the maximum flow of glue through the tip or the nozzle. And I'm just going to start outlining what I just drew with glue. And uh, in order to do this effectively, you want to keep the glue lifted off of the paper just a little bit. Uh, you, you don't want the nozzle pressing directly into the paper because that's going to create little divots in the line marks that you're trying to make. And you really want to create thicker areas of glue um, as you go. Essentially, you're, you're drawing with the glue. Now I'm gonna speed it up so it, it's going a little bit faster for you. And you can see that I'm trying to get good coverage. And I'm also trying to cover the, the lines that I made when I drew with my colored pencil. There we go. And sometimes uh, you may have to clean out the nozzle just a bit just to make sure that you're getting the maximum flow. I had to do that right here. Um, use two hands if you need to just to, to get, the, get the glue coming out pretty even. There we go. All right, done. As you can see, it's been 24 hours later and the glue is dry. Now, a little secret. I actually did a second layer of glue so that it was a little bit thicker so that way it was very obvious when I started my soft pastel. Now I'm bringing in uh, some green to start since this is the, the kind of plan I have for my landscape. So I'm just going to start working in the soft pastel in between the line work of glue that I've made. And I'm, uh, you can just fill in by shape. That's kind of the easiest way to do it and really uh, get the soft pastel up against the edges of that glue. Now if you're finding it a little bit difficult to do that, don't worry because once we, once we fill in our space, we can start to use our finger to really move that pastel around so it gets really, really good coverage. But for now, we're just laying down the color that we want first. So now I'm just gonna take a, a lighter sort of um, neonish green and bring that in. Uh, I like to do this when I'm creating um, soft pastel landscapes just to uh, build the diversity and variance of the green color or the ground plane. Uh, it makes it a little bit more visually interesting and the, the vibrancy of soft pastel is so particular, it's so so bright so often 
that uh, it's nice to, to build in the, the different layers of colors. So now I'm just going to take my finger, I'm going to start smudging or blurring the pastel. Um, and that helps work the pastel together so that those two colors are blending a little bit, um, the light green and the dark green. Uh, but it also helps get the, the pastel into those little crevices that may have felt a little bit more difficult to draw in directly with the, with the stick of pastel. Um, if you don't like getting your fingers dirty, and that's totally cool, you can use a cotton ball or what was really great is a Q-tip or a little makeup uh, sponge. Uh, you can also use a brush, but I like to use the brush to lightly blur. So I think if you're going to do something a bit more intensive like smudging, then uh, you want something that has a little bit more force to it. So a finger works great, but a Q-tip or a, a harder kind of foam sponge will also work well. So now I'm going to speed it up for you and I'm just going to show you my process of working in with different colors, I'm adding a little bit of light color towards the edge of the path here, again just to diversify that, that landscape and create a sense of space. Even though this is a kind of expressive landscape rather than a realistic landscape, we can still play with the qualities of lights and darks. And I'm just adding in interesting details here just to make it more, more diverse. I'm working in with a, with a kind of a light gray for the mountains. Now I'm not going to keep the mountains gray, I'm going to add a, some blues and some purples in a little bit, but I wanted to start with this base color of gray. Again just working in that color and blurring with my finger. Now I'm going to take some of this kind of lilac-y blue purple and start dropping that in. I'm not filling in the whole space obviously, just kind of adding it in areas to create a push and pull with the colors. There we go. And I'm using my brush to take a little bit of it away. Uh, the brush, the bristle brush is kind of stiff so it'll pick up some of that dust. You can actually see some of the dust collecting in different areas of the mountain range that I've drawn. and. Uh, it, it's really helpful to pick up an excess of pastel uh, if you press a little bit harder. I'm turning my drawing and tapping it a couple of times to make the pastel fall off of it. I recommend doing that rather than just blowing on it directly. Now I'm turning it so I can reach the other side and not smudge any of the color work that I've done at the bottom. I'm putting a little snow-capped ridge on those mountains. It's sometimes hard to find a clean white um, or to keep your white clean, I suggest washing your hands or wiping down your fingers before you start working with white. Now I'm going in and adding some kind of orange yellow to the sun. There we go. And taking some of that pan pastel, I want that sun to be a little bit warmer and uh, dropping in a kind of acidy yellow ochre color. There we go. Now working in on those rays. It's a super vibrant orange, very nice. What I like about um, landscapes, especially expressive landscapes, is you can play with the color, like sunsets that have pink colors in the clouds, so I'm going to add that here. Picture's starting to come together. Okay, it's looking real, real cool. Now if you're worried about like cross-contamination, that's why we have these little ridges of glue, these areas of glue to kind of act as boundaries. Now that I've laid down almost all of the base colors, I'm starting to work in with more detail, with lighter colors and darker colors, just to make it a little bit more um, interesting. I'm going to take this vi bright, vibrant blue and uh, take that and work it into the mountains. And I'm just tapping it in here, I'm not pushing it around, I'm just tapping it first because I don't, I don't want to push off the pastel that I've made. So just grabbing it and dropping it in here. There we go. Okay. And now just lightly pushing it. It's just 
making that mountain range just feel a little bit more um, rocky and shadowy. I'm gonna tap it again just to get all that dust off and blowing it off. <laughs> Extreme close up for the camera. All right, now I'm gonna just add a couple kinds of flower shapes in there. I'm not obviously doing this realistically, just trying to make what feels right for the composition. I'm gonna draw a little red in there. Red tends to be particularly bright and soft pastel, which is, I, I love that. I'm taking this cerulean blue and drawing some line work into the mountains just to kind of build on that layering quality, uh, have the colors behind this cerulean line work kind of um, uh, pop out in a different way. And I'm also going to take some, some kind of seafoam green blue and drop that in to, to shade the snow a little bit. Again, we're not working from realism here. This is an expressive, fun landscape, so we're just playing with it. Tap it one more time for good measure, and we're done. Look at that, it's so bright and vibrant. It looks really cool, and that glue boundary does a lot. It turned out pretty good, right? So uh, what I especially like about this process is that the 3D um, quality of the glue uh, creates like a, a little boundary that you get to work within. Um, and so for little folks, uh, it, it, it's like having a 3D coloring book, essentially. For the more mature artist, um, it, it's an interesting organic textural element that you get to work within and play with. Um, a few things to think about. When you're working on your drawing, uh, soft pastel gets everywhere, so it's good to keep napkins on hand or a wet paper towel just to clean off your hands in between um, working with different colors. I mentioned that during the video, but I also wanted to state it again here. Um, you also will get soft pastel on the back, so um, if you're planning to put this on something or if you hand it to someone as a gift, you uh, might want to wipe off the back first to uh, not get their hands totally covered with rainbow dust. So uh, another thing to think about is spray fixing your work. So um, this is an art fixative. It's a matte spray. You can use it on paintings. You can use it on drawings. If you don't have a uh, regular fixative that you buy at the art store, you can just use hairspray. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't have to be an expensive proposition and it'll go a long way in protecting uh, your piece so it doesn't dust off when you touch it. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye.